Hello, 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 and welcome back to my channel. My name is Marlies, also known as Marley Design. And today I am here, totally only one pair of hands. I am alone without Louise this time. And we do have to say, we both agree, we really miss each other because how fun is it to be together, create together, and uh, finish each other's sentences and uh, you know when somebody's talking uh, about creative terms and information you really get them and now yeah it's just me oh we are so sad about that but we promised each other that we would continue at home Louise in her studio in Austria and I am back home in the Netherlands and we promised each other to um, divide our made items in Austria and uh, so I have taken home um, a couple of papers out of the video with the swiping and brayering technique and this is out of the video where we made some tags, two tags, with um, the paints in the background, a texture paste on top, and also in the background there is some glaze. And we decided that everything that we have made to cut it in half. So that is also the reason when you look over here that I only have half of the green tag and half of Louise's flower tag. And it also goes for these papers because um, in Austria when we created the papers, the papers were larger and we all cut them in half and we had some leftover bits and pieces. So I brought some of these papers home with me so I could even use them in another project. And a project that is also connected to our Distress Paint mini-series. For today I'm going to work on creating a tag. I have to figure something out because of course we have two, two parts. Uh, and um, yeah, it's up to me how I can arrange it, fix it, close this gap again and make a beautiful setting on top. Um, that will make it work that also the green and the flowers are coming more together and it will be a matching project. I cannot wait to jump in so let's start! First thing that I'm going to do is to um, tape the back so it is more easy for me to see um, how everything will look in front view when both parts, the upper and bottom part, are connected. Um, and maybe it will also give me an idea on my next step. That already looks much better. It's a great starting point. So I searched in my stash for some nice die cuts because we have those leftover papers, it would be nice and also very handy to cut out some kind of shapes. For now, I have chosen this kind of paper out of uh, our stash. Uh, but of course, I do not know if this will be the definitely one that will go through on the project. But it's just to get started and see um, what I like or what I do not like. And I'm going to cut out some little birds out of this die set. It's from Tim Holtz and Sissix and the number is 665861. Because I'm going to create some kind of scenery on top of this tag, uh, and I am already working with a bird. So I thought about uh, also about flowers and branches and yeah, more natural things. I came out on this paper because the green that is over here, that is the forest moss, is also on here. And maybe I can cut out just some of these flowers. 
And this is also a Thin Lids set from Tim Holtz and Sissix. And this number is 664164. So I will go to my die cut machine and we'll be right back. Here I have the cut out birds and also the cut out flowers. For now I am going with my focal point for this tag with a bird. This tag has like a sharp edge everywhere and I want it to be a little bit more rough and messy and I would like it to be in different kind of materials. So I'm going to look for some fabric or pieces of fabric that I can stitch along the sides or a little bit underneath to give it an all over messy look. I have a little plastic cup. I have a strip of chiffon and I like the roughness on the edges but I would like it in a different kind of color and I'm going for the Distress Spray Stain Forest Moss because we also used forest moss on the top. Let's get going. And I think that already looks very good so I will keep it in here. I will set it to the side so it can dry. Another way of adding some fabric along the sides or a little bit underneath is just to cut some strips of fabric. This is just an old piece of bedding, cotton. I have stained it with different kind of colors for um, another kind of project that I did. And I'm going to, like you know, you see those threads. You want those loose threads because I said I want it a little bit messy. So clear straight edges is not going to do it for me. I want it more loose and messy, a little bit grungy stained. I have torn three strips of this fabric and I made it a little bit messy and loose threads on the sides. Um, what I'm going to do is gather those three strips in just one bowl and it will look like this. And I will put that to the side. And if the little ball is not going to stay in this shape, you can also think about putting a little bit uh, of an elastic band around it. My chiffon has dried overnight. The color, the distress spray stain, the forest moss did soak in a whole lot. So I do not have a whole lot of white space and spots left. But that's okay, we will work with this. And the other piece of fabric, the strips of fabric that I roughened up a little bit, make it into a little bowl. I did put a rubber band around it and let it stay also overnight like this. Um, yeah, let's take the rubber band off. You can really see it is... Um, rough and with loose threads and it is all wrinkled and that is what I really love. Here this is also cool, just loose threads that you can can use. And this is a little close-up for you so you can see what the effect is of the rolling ball and letting it sit for a night. I'm going to stack up this fabric a little bit on the side so I will make some folds, put it a little bit on the back and uh, some pieces on the front. What you can do is do a running stitch on top of this or maybe you want a zigzag, a crisscross stitch on the side. You can also build up your layers with fabric. Just put a piece of this strip on top of here and also play, um, play around a little bit 
on the top and bend it to the back and maybe a little bit back on the top and stitch it along. This is what I have so far. Uh, it looks really messy, that is what I like. And you can also see what I did not tell you before, that I also added some loose black thread in between. And that is just the thread from my machine that I have uh, cut off. I have leftovers and it looks like this. And then I will also make it into a little bowl and put it to the side. And when I need it, I will pick something out of there. I did not attach the chiffon all over the tag. I added a little bit to this side and just a little piece over here on this side. This is it for now. Because I already have these cut out birds, I thought about a little bit of a natural nature theme. So no better way than just make maybe a little nest for those birds. And then I also need um, natural materials just to make a beautiful setting where I can place those birds in. So I have got out some green moss, a little bit of sazelle, the um, Tim Holtz eggs. Uh, I'm going to alter these uh, in a later stage. I also found a more like delicate piece of branch with still some parts on it from nature itself. Uh, maybe we want to cut it off maybe a little bit, um, but we will see how far uh, we can come with this. And I'm going to try to make like with the sizzle, you can make like a little bird's nest when you have a piece of sizzle. What I did was just rolled a little ball out of it, maybe make a little circle motion in the middle and then it will look like this. The shape of this branch is really nice because it's like this and then it goes that way in a kind of a V shape and that is perfect for placing this little bird's nest. I'm just making a little setting right now. This will maybe not be definitely the setting that I'm going to choose but I just want to give you an idea of my plan and to make it a little bit more visible for you. And then we have something like this. That looks already cool. I love it. That's beautiful. Because these birds are not too big, so let's see if we can get two in there. I have put the little eggs in this painting tray and I have chosen two colors to paint them with, picket fence and also the fossilized amber. I did two drops of white and I will do one drop of yellow. And let me first see because I really want uh, that is too yellow. That is too yellow. I really want a soft, really soft yellow tone. I will let those eggs in there and just rub my brush over it and I will let it sit there and dry. And this is what it looks like up close. I'm going to spritz the Cezelle lightly. I have got out my Distress Spray Stain, the brushed corduroy. And yeah, I will just spray it a little bit and see what the effect is. And this is the result. And I think the color will be okay for this project. I will set it to the side to dry. And let's see how every piece will turn out in a moment and if they will all go together. You can see I brought out my glue gun. I have my hands free to work on assembling uh, the, the branch and the pieces of moss and little, a little bit of threads underneath and in between. So yeah, let's start. This will be my base. And the branch will go on top of that. 
I have to decide which side of the branch is the most handy to glue down because you need some kind of a flat spot on the branch so you can glue. I mean, you just have to begin somewhere because when you are just overthinking and uh, weighing your options against each other, nothing will really happen because you always have pros and cons. So I have a rough idea of what I want and I'm just going to start. And there we go. This is just the first part. Let's build some more layers. I also have these little pieces that I have cut out of those fabric strips and when you just put a little dot of glue over here and you have like a little tool just to have it like this you can easily maneuver your fabric in between those layers. And this is what I have so far. I have some loose threads in between, some loose pieces of sizzle. I added some green moss and little pieces of fabric with a dot of glue that I poked into this uh, little, little bird nest. And this is a great base to work on um, even more. The little bird's nest is dry. So I'm go going to see if I can uh, create the best shape for this project. And you can also see about the staining that I did. It did not cover the whole white or beige sizzle color, but um, I don't mind. I think it looks good uh, as it is right now. So let me glue it down. I think I will glue the whole thing down right away because I really like the effect. I am happy how it looks like right now. Look at that. I really, really adore it. It's so cute. And can you imagine the little birdies on the branch or behind the nest? That will be awesome. So here in front of me I have those cut out flowers. Of course they have also, they have forest moss color in it, but they also have another kind of bluish color in there. Normally I would not add this to the project that I am working on because most colors are already green and I have a little bit of yellow and a little bit of gold over here and brown so there is a lot going on so normally I would not add this to the party but of course these are the papers that I brought from Louise's um, studio and I do want to give it um, a nice place on this project you can cut those into smaller pieces not only use the large one but use the smaller pieces. I will glue them in between the layers around the nest. But before gluing them down, I will give them a good rub of a dark brown ink because in the background we already worked on those tags with uh, some brown, dark brown colors. So I have my archival ink ground espresso and I'm just going to give it a good brown rub. Also to cover up a little bit more of the vibrant bluish color that is in there. Um, it's not that I do not like it, but it will be like <laughs> a very festive and colorful party otherwise. Here you can see that the blue color is a little bit toned down by the ground espresso.
Here you can see just the little pieces of flowers that I have added in between the existing layers of the bird nest on the bottom here and here on the side. And I think it also creates um, a more of a flow because there is already green in here. So I think it will take the green a little bit more downwards. And the only thing I am thinking of right now is that we have a lot of gold going on here in the left down corner. This is quite the same color scheme, the brushed corduroy that we sprayed on top of the nest. But if we want to take this color also a little bit further along to the other side, to the green side, maybe I have to figure out a way to do that. So let me think on that for a while, how we can incorporate the gold and the brush corduroy color a little bit more towards the top of the tag. I am back. Those little eggs have dried in the meantime. Uh, they have just one color, the light yellow, but I do want them to be speckled. Um, I was thinking about the Distress Paint Ground Espresso, but I do not have that in my stash. I do not want it to be black because this is black suit. And the vintage photo will be too light to my liking. So I was thinking uh, to put a drop of a vintage photo in this little circle and just put a tiny, tiny bit of the black suit to create a darker brown. So let's start. And um, what you saw me doing is put in the vintage photo first and then a drop of black suit. Just mix it and add a drop of black suit um, again and again until you are happy with the darker color. I added the water so the paint is a little bit more fluent and easier to splatter around. Continue the splattering uh, as long as you like. Uh, you do not want it to be totally covered in splatters, but just a tiny bit so it will look very natural. So you have to stop in time. I just did. And now I will let this dry. Because of the gold, we stained the nest a little bit more in a goldish kind of color. But um, I was wondering if we could add a couple of pops, maybe goldish, brownish, to get this color more into the, the whole project. I got out the Tim Holtz bouquet, so they are adorable and very, very handy because, well, they are white and you can stain them and color them as you wish. So what did I do? I just got a piece of this out of this box, torn this piece of paper off so all flowers are loose. Now they are like this, just one piece at a time that you could color. And I have put them onto a kitchen towel. I took a look in my stash uh, to search for a color that is matching the bottom part, the warm tones of this tag. And I found the Distress Mica Stain Crooked Broomstick. You just need a couple of sprays to get it a little bit more colored. I will let them dry. My first opinion is that they will be too dark and not really goldish enough to match. But maybe we can add something to it later to make it more matching. What I'm going to add to these flowers is the Distress Paint Antique Bronze. As you can see, I dropped something on my paper towel, but I will take that anyway because it is 
a waste if you're just going to smear that away. So I have a small brush and I'm just going to pick up some paint and brush it onto those little petals. I think this first try turned out dark. Quite dark. It can be beautiful, but I really would wish it was a little bit lighter. So I'm going to make a second batch and I'm just going to add the distress paint on the white flower without the first layer that I did on these with the mica stain. And what I can see on camera that the color isn't really showing up in the correct way. So um, in real, over here, it's more a really bronzy, bronze, orange kind of color. This is how these little flowers turned out. I think the color is matching, so it is time to glue them down in between all the layers of moss and branches that we already created. So yeah, flowers are done. I also glued in the little cute eggs and I think this is just adorable. What you can also notice is that he has no feet and the reason why is because he has to go behind here and when the feet were still on I had to push and push and push and the paper was like wrinkling. So I just cut them off. I want to give both of these birds just a little eye, so it's more like, this is like flat, and I want it a little bit more living and lively. This is the Distress Paint Black Suit, and I'm just going to dip in this little skewer, and just for trying, I'm just going to that is a little bit too big for an eye. So let's try the other side. That's a little bit better size wise. And this is like it really is a bird because of the eye. I will let this dry and maybe I will try to put in the middle of the black circle a little speckle of white. To make the white dot I'm going to use a Distress Paint Picket Fence. I will put just a little drop on the top of my hand. And then I have this skewer with this pointy end. And I'm going to try to make the dot with this point. The little eyes have dried and um, yeah, time to glue them on the project into the bird's nest. And there are the little birdies. I think this project turned out really, really nice. 
Uh, I am just missing one thing, I think, and that is something to back the tag itself. And I think I will go for just a black paper, um, just to accentuate those outer lines. I have a regular piece of black paper. I will roughen up the edges because yeah, it's vintage and I really want it to be a little bit more rough and not a clean cut on those edges. I also want to discover if I can add just a little bit of coloring on those rough edges. So I have uh, the Distress Oxide Spray, the vintage photo over here. And I am not spraying, I am just going to use the nozzle. And I will try to drag some of the color along the sides and just see how, how it turns out. I mean, on those rough edges, the paper structure is um, like open. So I'm hoping that the ink will soak in a little bit and give some staining. And this is the close-up of how it turns out. I really like this effect. Uh, maybe I can also do a little bit of splattering uh, along all sides and make it a little bit more grungy. I will just spray some of the color in this little container, in this little cup. Wet it down with some water. Make it fluid enough so you can get a nice splatter. I will let it soak in for just a, a little while and I will get back to you when it's dry. This is how the back paper turned out. Beautiful speckles, nice edges. A little bit rough, I like it. And now, um, yeah, we can glue that to the back of the tag. First, I made sure to get everything out of the way, so the threads I'm pushing a little bit to the side. The fabric also a little bit more to the side, so I have a nice clean surface to put my glue on. To glue it down, I'm going to use a Distress Collage Medium Matte. Make sure to center it uh, and that all sides that are visible of the black cardstock are similar in size. So make sure, maybe wiggle around a little bit and put it into the right place. To make sure that it will stick and stay in place I am going to put some clips on there to hold it. I have two things left to do and one of them is adding a little quote on the tag. So I will grunge this up a little bit and glue it down. And the second thing I want to do is to put something through the hole, the top hole. Um, yeah, to make it a little bit more like a tag, of course. And it is quite easy to, to do. So I gathered same like materials that I already used in in the nest and also uh, underneath in the layers with fabric. So I got out uh, a piece, a strip of the, the greenish chiffon, the strip of fabric that I have torn. You have those rough edges. I have um, a couple of strings of the, it looks like Cezelle. And I have some loose black thread, so I will all combine it and see if I can get it all together through the through that little hole.
So this is what it looks like. You can trim down a couple of pieces when you think it is too long. But for now, I think I like it this way. It is a good size of thread that is uh, still on there. I will pull on some of those threads to make sure it is tight, tight enough. For the little coat, I am first going to give it a rub of ground espresso to darken it a little bit along all edges just to give it a little bit of stain so it will match the project. Then I have my Distress Oxide Spray Vintage Photo and I will just take the nozzle and get some staining on the sides. And this is what we have and I will let it dry on the side. You just saw me tapping a little bit on those, um, well, wet areas of oxide spray. And I think that is a little bit better because it's not really like a blob and it's more like faded out. For the gluing down part, I'm using the Distress Collage Medium. And I found the perfect spot down here to also connect a little bit of this corner. And here I have a close up for you on the quote. And I think the whole project turned out just beautiful. I really like it. And this project also learned me that you can definitely make something out of two different kind of tags and make it into a whole that is matching and that is really lovely to see. Um, so yeah, maybe a challenge for yourself to try once and uh, yeah, have fun and uh, enjoy creating. And of course, I am not the only one uh, with those two pieces of tag. Louise has the other two, also a piece of the green one and also a piece of the golden brown one. And if you are curious about what she has created with those two half tags, then I would like to invite you to go and see her video on her YouTube channel, Louise Heinzel. You can find Louise on different platforms. She has a YouTube channel, she has Instagram and Facebook, also a Facebook group, and she has an Etsy store. So I will put all her links in the description box below so you can check her out. So this was it for today. I I hope you liked my video, got some inspiration out of it. And I would like to say thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.